Hello, citizens. You know, technology changes so quickly these days. Siri, where are my pants? In just the past few decades, technological advances have changed the way we do pretty much everything. If you're my grandpa, it can be pretty hard to keep up. Oh, there they are. While the pace of technological growth seems to be going faster and faster, progress is not always guaranteed. Wars happen, economies change, and people forget. We're going to look at some of the brilliant inventions of the ancient world that were centuries ahead of their time. Lost Technologies, today on Tinyverse. Huh? Nowadays, information is easy to share and preserve. Thanks to the internet, we can hardly get rid of anything. Whether it's memes, scientific journals, or that photo of me getting pantsed at senior prom. But back when we had to write things down, knowledge took up a lot of space. In 300 BCE, the Egyptian Greeks set out to build the greatest hub of human knowledge the ancient world had ever seen. The Great Library of Alexandria. The goal of the Great Library was to collect a copy of every book ever written. Every ship that came into Alexandria's harbor was required to hand over all of their scrolls for copying. They managed to accumulate between four and 700,000 scrolls, many of them tagged with metadata about the author, title, and subject. But after numerous sackings and multiple fires, some of which were apparently accidents, by 642 CE, the Great Library was no more her pages lost to the ravages of time. When knowledge is lost, technology suffers. That's because technology builds on the ideas that get passed on. Each generation iterates on the work of the one before it, finding novel ways of doing things and ways to do things that have never been done before. We're gonna look at a few human inventions that we lost and had to reinvent centuries later. Starting with a frickin' laser. Ken Glazer, who's that? Archimedes Death Ray, ancient laser. Archimedes of Syracuse was a brilliant mathematician and engineer. He studied in Alexandria and then returned home to build war machines to protect his city from Roman invasion. He designed massive grappling hooks that could flip warships. But one of his most unique contributions to the city's defense was the heat ray. Like a kid playing with a magnifying glass, Archimedes is said to have destroyed enemy ships with fire from burning glasses during the siege of Syracuse in 212 BCE. While the reports are a bit hazy, it was believed that the ships were set ablaze using mirrors to focus all the sun's light into a single point. Modern attempts to recreate this technology have found that a lot of things would have had to line up in order to make this heat ray work. But in theory, it's possible. Even if it just blinded the enemy soldiers while they fired flaming arrows, it's still a pretty cool device. But after the Romans eventually sacked the city, the heat ray never made it into their arsenal. So it was lost to legend. Antikythera Mechanism, Ancient Computer Archimedes conceived of another mysterious device that was found by divers off the shores of Antikythera, Greece. It took years of investigation to figure out how it worked. This device with over 30 gears, dials, and cranks could mathematically predict the movement of the sun, the moon, and the other five planets we knew about at the time. It could predict the phases of the moon, which were important in farming, and eclipses, which were important for wartime decisions. This ingenious device was like an early computer, mathematically calibrated to follow the 29 and a half day cycles of the moon, which is what the months were based on. But 12 moon cycles is only 354 days, so the device had to add the extra days. Plus, it accounted for leap years and the elliptical orbits of planets, which makes them seem to speed up and slow down in the sky. When the Romans sacked Syracuse, one of the generals is rumored to have kept an early version of this machine. In this modern world, so many things run on batteries. I broke your robot! But batteries might not be such a modern invention after all. I think the goldfish is sick. Baghdad Battery, Ancient Battery. This device dates back to some time between 200 BCE and 200 CE. It was a simple terracotta jar, five inches tall, containing a copper cylinder with an iron rod in it. When the jar was filled with an acidic solution like vinegar, grape, or lemon juice, it would form an electrical current between the copper and the iron. It would have only produced around one volt, which is less than a hand buzzer, although they could have connected a bunch of them to increase the voltage. But it begs the question, what did they use them for? There are a number of theories, like 
being hooked up to religious idols that give you a divine shock when you touch them, or acupuncture, which was being practiced in China at the time. Archaeologists have found needles with some of the batteries, and the ancient Greeks had written about the pain-killing effects of applying electrical fish to the soles of their feet. But a likely use for these batteries was electroplating. This is the technique for transferring a thin layer of one metal onto another metal surface, like applying a thin layer of gold onto some silver jewelry. This would have been a profitable skill since other methods of gilding can be wasteful. But for now, there's no conclusive evidence of what these batteries were actually used for. Greek fire, ancient napalm. When Rome divided, the Eastern Greek side became the Byzantine Empire, and they had a pretty fearsome trick up their sleeve. Greek fire was a sticky oil that was highly flammable. They'd load this stuff into ceramic grenades and launch them with catapults. Plus, it was also extremely effective at sea, as Byzantines armed their warships with flamethrowers. The ships were equipped with furnaces to heat the oil, which was then pumped out of a nozzle. A lit torch in front would light the spray on fire, producing a 20-foot spout of sticky, flaming goo. It had set fire to the enemy ships and even coat water in a layer of flames, like the Battle of Blackwater Bay. This awe-inspiring weapon stayed in the Byzantine arsenal for hundreds of years with great results. Uh, for them. I love the smell of Greek fire in the morning. We think it was made from a crude oil they called naphtha, but the exact recipe was a highly guarded military secret, and it was lost when the Byzantine Empire fell in 1453. We still managed to invent batteries, computers, lasers, and napalm, but we might have lost decades or centuries by losing those early prototypes. When civilizations fall, sometimes their tech goes with them, like the knowledge of how the Egyptians built pyramids, or how the Romans built the aqueducts. Marvels of engineering that were centuries ahead of their time. When the Roman Empire divided, the West went through a period sometimes referred to as the Dark Ages. This was a time when most of the population was illiterate, and much of the knowledge of the ancient world was lost. Technology keeps on improving our lives. We like to think that trend will continue forever, but technology doesn't just advance on its own. Not yet, at least. It's the work of whole cultures passing down ideas and keeping techniques alive. While the technologies of ancient civilizations might get buried by the sands of time, it's hard to imagine that happening in our modern world, where everything is recorded and information is so easily shared. But tons of technologies get left behind every year when people stop caring about them. Look at the space program. We went to the moon in 1969, and it's not until recently that we started to think about going back there. Budget cuts to the space program and lack of public interest put this technology on the shelf for almost 50 years. Economic factors affect the way that technology advances as much as wars do. But if enough humans work on a thing, we can make some pretty cool stuff. I, I gotta use this thing to make a phone call. Hmm, this is pretty neat. I thought you did it because you were ready. Uh, no, that's action. When I say action, oh, action. Thanks for watching Lost Tech. I'd like to introduce you to Randy. She's our designer. Oh, sorry, I missed it. <laughs> <laughs> she also has an Instagram account. You can check her out stuff out here or in the description down below. She sure does. Wait, I was breathing too hard there. <laughs> <laughs> so don't forget to like and subscribe uh, and hit the notification bell so that you can find out when we release more videos. So until next time, we'll see you around in the Tinyverse. See ya. Okay, that was perfect. 100% perfect. First take. <laughs> and now we just need 20 minutes of waving. Uh, yeah, until we hit the 10 minute mark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's getting there. Uh, I gotta Here hit the go. 10 minute mark. Keep watching, guys. Yeah, guys, don't hands. click away. We're not done. Just walk away from your computer and just let it run. Okay. <laughs>